this country's collective exuberance and then collective grief after that fateful football match on November 19, 1989 quickly turned into outrage. But how many of you still remember your concerns over an overcrowded stadium? It was you, the taxpayer, who requested the commission of inquiry, and you, the taxpayer, who are still paying for it. The Football Commission of Inquiry began in March 1990 to investigate the apparent overcrowding of the national stadium during a World Cup qualifying match, including security, safety breaches, and the number of tickets printed by the TTFA. 43 meetings, 42 witnesses, and two and a half years later, there seems to be no end in sight to it. I feel personally, and I think people must begin to feel this, the investigation must be expensive, notwithstanding Mr. Simongal's protestations, but I feel it must be expensive, and it needs to be brought to a conclusion. What we need to ascertain is why, why is it that commissions of inquiry appear to take so long to submit their reports? And a good example of that, which is current, is the football inquiry, which seems, from the public's point of view, to be going on uh, Ad infinitum. Although the Attorney General would not comment, TV6 understands that this inquiry could be costing the state up to half a million dollars so far. So why the delay? Commissioner Lionel Simangal, who would not go on camera, calls it one of the most dynamic and complicated inquiries ever held here, and one with many blocks, the biggest of which is that the TTFA took two years to submit its audited accounts, still uncertified by their accountant. This means that this audit was not certified. Nevertheless, the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association at its annual general meeting approved this uncertified audit by a vote of 16 to 13. That was deemed inadequate. A team of government auditors were appointed, who in turn recommended a full-time auditor to the inquiry. O'Connor admits the accounts were late, but... Is it a slow on the... On, 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 on the, the the people who have done the audits, I don't know, but I have never heard of an auditor having his audit audited. What you can ask is somebody else to conduct a full audit of, of, of the proceedings. The investigation doesn't hinge on the accounts of the TNTFA, so don't let people tell you that that is the whole thing. The investigation hinged upon the, the overall how people got in, what were the security arrangements, at what time were the gates opened, um, many, many things. The, 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 the accounts were just part to see if the monies collected at the game related could have been properly accounted for. O'Connor has problems with the manner in which the inquiry is being conducted. Well, several people, including one person who wrote to the media, complained about some of the unusual outbursts that one hears. On the on on the uh, and, and opinions cast aspersions cast by the commissioner against people who are still to appear. Meanwhile, the three key witnesses, Peter O'Connor, Brigadier Brown, and Jack Warner, are yet to be called up. It is very difficult for him to fix a date when he would restart the hearings. This will depend heavily, of course, on the findings of the auditor. And having done that. Each witness will be given adequate opportunity to be represented by counsel, and uh, those sittings will take quite some time. When the report is submitted, and there is no pressure from the public because they're not concerned, the very person to whom the report is submitted feels no special uh, need to pursue it because it is no longer topical or no longer controversial. It's rather strange. As I said, I, I can't account for that. And um, perhaps it's linked to the whole question of a review of the, the whole judicial system in the country. And if the public has to wait ad infinitum for the report, legal sources say that it will serve only as another example that the legal machinery is not running as smoothly as it should. Ira Martho, TV6 News, with a special report. Football Fiasco Plus.